Modern life is rubbish, isn't it? I mean, it's nothing like ancient Egypt with the magnificent life-giving banks of the Nile, hieroglyphics full of mysterious secrets, the pyramids, constructs of incredible design and alien beauty. We don't even know where they came from. Where are the... Well, where are the new oil and oil slaves? Comet is a big glossy game with a big glossy problem, and that problem is called Cyclades. Cyclades is a game of warring Greek gods from the same publisher. It's absolutely excellent. It has a beautiful auction mechanic that plays into a wonderful strategy game with gorgeous miniatures. The question then is, is Comet as good? And more difficultly, should you buy one if you have the other? So first off, what do you get inside that nice big box? Well, you get a board. A double-sided board, actually. A lovely plastic bag of lovely plastic Egyptians. A selection of spooky plastic monsters. A couple of decks of cards. A load of powers. And still more stuff. You're going to set up the board like this. Everybody will have a city with ten men and three pyramids in it, which are actually four-sided dice that have been cleverly repurposed, and you're ready to kick off. And kick off is a very fitting term, because Comet is about two things. It is about looking good and starting fights, making it the Russell Crowe of the board gaming world. You win the moment you get to eight victory points, or ten if you're playing the long game. And the easiest way to do that is to go off and have a fight and win, which gets you one victory point. Not if you're the defender and you win, you have to attack and win. But there are three very important things that you need to know before you start beating up your friends. Right, important thing number one is temples. Around the board are a bunch of temples, and if you can take them and sit in them, if you're in them at the end of one of Komet's gory rounds, you're gonna get rewarded. So if you're gonna bloody your friend's nose, you might as well do it kicking them out of temples. And the reward you're gonna get is mostly prayer points. You're going to be spending those prayer points on important thing number two, which is upgrading your temples from levels one to four, so you can buy levels one to four of the different coloured upgrade powers, which include red power, which is all attacking, blue power, which is all defending, and white power, which is economic and includes slavery and the Crusades. I, not even kidding, like, just, yeah. So, hold territory to get resources and spend resources on your army. So far, so every other game ever, but with some exciting racist undertones. Now, we get onto the area that made me nervous about Comet when I was reading the manual. When you're moving your soldiers, rather than moving them to areas, you don't have to do that. You can spend two prayer points to teleport them to anywhere with an obelisk. So, here, 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 here. Or there. So the entire board, I was reading this and I thought... What? That's bollocks! In strategy games, moving units around is the puzzle. You can't just teleport things wherever you want. Anyway, turns out I was being an idiot and Comet's teleporting is actually a fantastic system because most strategy games always start the same way. Very slowly. People move units, they do a lot of talking, they form defensive lines, and they don't actually get into the habit of fighting, which can lead to a sort of tedious thing where some players sort of hover around the edges, not wanting to be the first to be a jerk. Comet dips you immediately into scalding hot war to because you pour units in, and by the end of the very first turn, there's already been blood, there's already been battles and already you're in the position where you've got beleaguered units and no money and life and death decisions because yeah I said you could port units wherever you want I didn't say you could port them back similarly speak similarly speedy is how you actually play commit okay let's look at your player board which are all different look or I'm a crocodile meow I'm a cat god or I'm gonna eat you and your children uh, <clears throat> and on your turn you're gonna be placing one of your five 
little action lozenges, okay? Komet is only ever interested in what you're doing right now, which means the table goes very, very quickly. Place it on a leg, you move a unit, that recruits a unit, that prays, that upgrades a temple, and of course, as you're taking up slots, it means you have even fewer decisions and it's all very fast. And at the bottom here are buying white, red, and blue powers. And oh my God, this next bit is so much fun. Now, lots of games let you upgrade your armies, okay? And that's fine. It lends the game a nice gravity as players get more dangerous as the match goes on. And it's always satisfying to get better at something. But I don't always like these systems. It can feel a bit like you personally are masturbating what everyone else is waiting for you to finish. Not so here. Komet has the best upgrade system I have ever encountered. It's Everyone else is interested in your onanism, which is probably a good thing, uh, because the powers are all so dangerous, they're all so interesting, and whatever you buy, nobody else can have. Look, you just got an elephant, and nobody else can have an elephant. Or do you want a giant scorpion? Do you want to be able to walk into people's cities as if the gates were unlocked? Do you want to get prayer points every time you murder something? But most importantly, the combinations of powers some players can achieve are ludicrous. And up for grabs tonight, contestants, we have the Mediterranean Murder Pack. With a holy war, you'll be getting prayer points whenever you kill anything, and with initiative and a big bloody scorpion, you'll be killing stuff all the time, running a little economic engine off the corpses of your friends. Or perhaps you believe that the best defense is just a really good defense. Get really good at defending, and then get victory points for defending. Sit on a temple and no one will want to attack you. Awesome! Or maybe you prefer our white power package deal. Slavery and taking mummies home so no one can get them. True story, in the 19th century, British archeologists opened an Egyptian temple and found literally hundreds of mummified cats. You know what they did with them? Turns out mummified bodies burn really well. We used them to run local steam trains. Anyway, combat in Kemet. So, there's no dice here, no dice at all, and that's totally fine. Dice were the worst thing about cyclades. There's nothing like having your beautiful strategy and your night's entertainment dissolved in the acid bath of random chance. No, instead, what Kemet offers is a hand of these combat cards, which are as beautiful as anything else in the game. You have to play one of these into a fight and you've got Grand attacks to less grand attacks to wild attacks to slightly rubbish defensive plays. And all you do is you count up the number of swords on the card, you add that to the number of soldiers you have, and that's who wins. And defenders win ties. You've also got these blood icons, which are how many people you kill, and shield icons, which is how many blood points the other person played you're saved from. And this is just so clever, because some of these cards are just better than others. And whatever you play goes into a discard pile, and you can't play it again until you've played everything else. It's awesome. You're wondering when you have to be defensive, when you have to be aggressive. It's also stolen from the excellent Game of Thrones board game, which might have stolen it from somewhere else. I don't know, board games are basically one massive burglary at this point. But it's just great. It's just clever. It's just clever. You know what else is clever? The way you play Divine Intervention. It's just clever. All right, so this, this is the Divine Intervention deck, and it's full of lots of small little one-shot powers that do things. It's just a small thing, small, something else for you to think about, but there's a reason that it's small. Look here, let's say these guys, these move over the bank of the Nile, and they're having a fight, and they each have to play their combat card into battle, except when you come to reveal them, that he played a thing and he played another, <gasps> He put his Divine Intervention card underneath. That's what you have to do when you reveal it and it does a thing. It's actual sleight of hand in a board game. And it's theatre. It's just clever. It's really clever. It's just fun. It's so... it's clever. and f It's clever. Okay, so... It should be apparent by now that there are a ton of wonderful ideas in Kemet. But what I find most miraculous is that Matago are the kind of publisher to understand that you want different sculpts for different factions, that the dog guys should dress up like a dog and the alligator god people should have a little alligator tail. The importance of giving you an elephant to play with and it's your elephant and no one else can have it. And yet, they're also like parents almost. Because the game ends after 90 minutes, just like Cyclades. It's actually quite a short game. And that might not sound like what you want, and these games are traditionally epic. But they're also traditionally quite boring by the end. 
and, and, and commit just isn't. It ends while you're still having fun, and that's actually great because you just want to get it out and play it again. Every minute of Kemet is fun, which is not something you can usually say about the genre of these colourful war games. But, okay, so now we'll just get on to my criticism, right? So, just like Cyclades, this is a game that's beautiful, intelligent, a wonderful contest, it's short, and it demands you pay attention, right? Because every decision matters, which is a good thing, but in Kemet, there are so many ideas. I've never seen this many ideas in a game so tight. It demands players instantly grasp all these systems, because if your first move matter, you better be moving in the strategy that you want immediately. So if you're not paying attention, if you're a little drunk or you're not paying, most you, usually you can fumble along in the first few turns, right, in a big board game like this. You can't in commit. If you fumble along for the first few turns, you've been wasting half of the game. So. That's not that bad, but then what gets worse is that if you've played Kemet a couple of times and you introduce it to new people, you're gonna win. Because even though you can try different strategies, you'll still know what a good strategy looks like. You'll still know to go for the good temples at the top of the board, or to combine these two tiles, or that the action disc tiles are great to get at the beginning. You can grab half the VPs required in one very clever move, if you're good. So, that's Kemet. And the thing is, if that's my criticism, if that's my criticism of the game, that it's a bit too tight, you know we're probably onto a winner. But, is it better than Cyclades? Let's go and look at the Shut Up and Sit Down supercomputer and find out. I've upgraded it recently, so it should, it should be better this time. Okay, hello computer! Computer. That uh, really wasn't a question. Okay. Right, so, is Comet better than Cyclades? Okay. No. Is Cyclades better than Comet? Cyclades is not as good as babies. Ah, uh, not the baby thing again. Is Cyclades still better than Comet? Cyclades is better than stillborn babies. Jesus Christ! No, stop with the baby thing! Babies. No, right, should they buy Comet? They should not buy cement. No, should they buy Comet? Why would they want cement? Ah, oh, f Are they building a baby? <sighs> Overall then, we were really impressed by Kemet. I think it just edges past City of Remnants as the best game with which to beat up your friends this year. As to whether it's better than Cyclades, there's no reason why you can't own both. They're both really different. But, my feeling is that if you don't play games very often, Cyclades edges this one out. It has half the rules, it's very elegant, and it's great from the first time you play. This one, this is more of a gamer's... Oh more of a gamer's game, right? Closer to the nerdy end of the spectrum, but if you're competitive, if you just want something to beat your friends with, if you want loads of systems and loads of possibility, this game is just entirely awesome. Overall, Shut Up and Sit Down recommends Kemet. Just like Real Egypt, it's a riot. Alright, you try ending a board game review then.